Welcome back to the latest episode of Conference Chatter TV. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I'm the KSports.com Big 12 blogger. Thanks for joining me again. And in this video blog, I make picks in every game in the Big 12 this college football season, and I'm here to reflect on my picks in Week 8. Now, I made no secret last week that I had a pretty horrible week. I was trying to rebound here in Week 8, and I didn't do too badly. I went 4-2 and two in picking Big 12 games here in Week 8, um, and that moves my record to 54-11, and 11, picking at an 83% clip on the season. So not quite where I want to be with that 4-2 and two week, but it's not too bad. Let's start with the misses as we do here. Those two games that I missed in the Big 12 this past week. The first one was an exciting one. Missouri 36, Oklahoma 27. I missed this one. I thought the Sooners were, you know, used to that big stage. They had won seven straight against Missouri, but couldn't pull it out. And now the Tigers are the only undefeated team in the Big 12 at 7-0. and Missouri, I give them a lot of credit. You know, they set the tone very early. They returned the opening kickoff 86 yards for a score. And, you know, they just uh, they held on from there. OU took the lead later, but a uh, resilient bunch, the Tigers, in coming back and winning this game. And if you compare the quarterbacks, Blaine Gabbert to Landry Jones, Gabbert, you know, a little, a little more efficient in this game. He had a higher completion percentage. Gabbert, he only had one touchdown, and Jones had three, but Gabbert did not turn the ball over. That was critical. And Landry Jones with two costly interceptions for OU. And one of those interceptions was by Alden Smith, and this is pretty important. Smith returning to the lineup after missing a month with a broken fibula, and he was made his he made his presence known, uh, picking off that pass. Key interception, returning at 58 yards to the Oklahoma 28 yard line, and that led to a touchdown. Missouri scored, took a 14-7 lead in the second quarter, and you know Alden Smith just igniting the Missouri defense, which is the difference in this year in Missouri being a good team um, or being you know, an elite team, I would say, in the Big 12. They've, they've always been a pretty good team uh, in the past few years, but they look like an elite team this season, and that's because of their defense. Now let's take a look at Missouri's schedule because it's 7-0. and They're undefeated, and you're starting to think, could they finish the year undefeated? I think it's possible that they, you know, for the regular season, you take a look, uh, this next week is going to be the one that's going to... Uh, maybe determine that. Uh, they go to Nebraska, which could determine the Big 12 North. Then Missouri's home to K-State. They go to Iowa State, and then they face KU in Kansas City. So if they get by Nebraska, there's a chance that the Tigers could finish the year, uh, the, or the regular season, I should say, undefeated, which would be incredible. I, I would never have thought that at the beginning of the season. But this next week, that's going to be a huge game against Nebraska, 2.30 p.m. Saturday. Missouri at Nebraska could decide the North, so stay tuned for that. My other miss in Week 8 was Iowa State 28, Texas 21. I don't know who could have seen this coming. The Longhorns were three touchdown favorites in this game and just did not get it done. And that 28-21 score was not really indicative of how much Iowa State dominated that game. I, you know, ISU was up 28-6 in the fourth quarter, and... It was just a terrible, terrible showing for UT. The offense struggled again. Um, Garrett Gilbert, three interceptions. Texas turned the ball over four times. And the Horns right now are looking far too inconsistent to make noise, you know, in the Big 12 South this year. They're, you know, they just came off a huge victory over a top five Nebraska team in Lincoln, and then they lose to Iowa State at home. I mean, it just, it makes no sense. And you know, Iowa State was beaten, you know, pretty bad their past two games. They came into, you know, came into Austin looking like a team that was just going to get rolled, but that was not not the case. Um, Paul Rhodes, the Iowa State coach, I give him a lot of credit, and, and it's pretty interesting. The, the Iowa State Athletic Department um, caught some video of Rhodes um, post-game in a locker room with the memorable locker room speech to the Cyclones. It's worth a check. It's worth checking out for sure. Um, if you're on KUSports.com and looking at my blog, I posted it there um, on my conference chatter blog. So check that out on KUSports.com. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, in Iowa State, they had a huge road win last year. If you guys remember, at Nebraska, in that just real low-scoring defensive battle, and that propelled them to a bowl game last season. So, you know, this year they're 4-4 four and four after beating Texas. They need two more wins. Maybe that was the victory that, you know, will... Carry Rhodes' squad to another uh, bowl appearance, which 
which would be insane considering their schedule this year. It looked unbelievably tough, it, and it is unbelievably tough. So if Iowa State gets to a bowl again this year, that would be a huge, huge accomplishment. The four other games that I picked were correct. Let's get to breaking down some of those that I had correct here, starting with Baylor 47 and K-State 42. That was a little bit higher scoring than I would have anticipated, but Baylor, you know, pulling out the victory. Now, with Oklahoma's loss, with Texas's loss, and Oklahoma State losing to Nebraska, Baylor now, yes, that's right, the Baylor Bears are in first place in the Big 12 South. I mean, I am speechless for that. I have no... No explanation. That's that's incredible. And, and Baylor, give them credit. You know, this they're bowl eligible now for the first time since 1994 with that victory over K State. It was a huge, huge day for Baylor. You know, going bowl eligible and then you know seeing their name first place in the Big 12 South. Robert Griffin was huge. He had over 400 yards passing, and they had unbelievable balance. Jay Finley, the running back, with 250 yards rushing. And when you have when you have that combination, Baylor's not going to lose many games. I mean, that that is that's pretty pretty significant. Both passing and the running game were on target for Art Bryles and the Bears. Uh, you know, Baylor suddenly goes to Texas next week. Baylor visits Texas, and this could be the most realistic chance Baylor has that they've had in a long time to beat the Longhorns. Texas, since the Big Twelve was formed, has beaten Baylor thirteen of fourteen times since 1996, the start of the Big 12 era. But, you know, Baylor, they, they might still be underdogs, but I think this will be close next week. They have a pretty decent chance of knocking off Texas, which hasn't played well at home recently. Next game here that I had correct was Nebraska 51, Oklahoma State 41. Another really, really high-scoring game. And I thought Taylor Martinez would bounce back, and that's exactly what he did with a very nice game. 323 yards passing, five touchdowns. That's very good news for Nebraska, which was just one week removed from their receivers dropping three touchdown passes and having several more uh, drop passes. Um, they they didn't drop nearly as many this week, and five touchdown receptions, that's great news for uh, Bo Pelini and the Huskers. And Martinez with a nice all-around game. He had 112 rushing yards as well to complement the, the 323 in the air. So he really had a nice... A nice, nice game. And for Oklahoma State, you know, they were undefeated coming into this game. And, you know, the, the Cowboys must improve defensively. You know, they're allowing 30 points per game. And, look, the offense is great. It's one of the best in the Big 12, maybe one of the best in the country. I mean, Kendall Hunter had 200 yards rushing, and they still lost. I mean, you got to be able to stop somebody on defense. Um, you know, and, and their passing game is fantastic. Brandon Whedon, um, I remember the, the play that stands out probably more than any and that game was the flea flicker. Uh, Oklahoma State, Whedon finding Justin Blackman on that exciting touchdown catch. And, and, you know, offense is not the problem in Stillwater. They need to, they need to stop somebody on defense um, if they're going to win the Big 12 South this year. The two others I had correct were Texas Tech 27, Colorado 24. Red Raiders barely surviving on the road there. And Texas A&M 45, Kansas 10. That was a pretty easy one to predict in Lawrence. So that's it. Four and two in week eight. Let's Let's improve on that. I'm 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 improving from from week seven to week eight. So let's let's improve a little bit again in in week nine. We'll see if we can do that. But I appreciate you guys checking out the latest episode of Conference Chatter TV. My name's Eric Sorrentino. I am out, and I'll talk to you again next week. Thanks a lot.